Magandang hapon mga isko at iska. Um, today we're celebrating uh, UP Foundation Day and that is the um, UP Nami Mahal from last year's, um, I think that's a virtual um, celebration ng um, graduation ceremony. So yeah, I hope you enjoy that, that um, stream. Um, so before we begin, um, I'd like to acknowledge the, I'm streaming from Melbourne, by the way. So my name is Janika and I'm the current president and convener of UP alumni in Victoria. So before I begin, I'd like to acknowledge the traditional custodians on the land of which I'm streaming from and pay my respects to elders past, present and emerging. Um, today we've got a powerhouse of activities that um, we've, lined up a lot of speakers um, and also uh, we celebrate the 114th anniversary of the founding of the University of the Philippines under Republic Act 1870. So um, UP was actually the result of the recommendation of the Secretary of Public Instruction at the time, William Morgan Schuster, to the Philippine Commission under the ha Philippine House of Assembly or the House of the Philippine Assembly um, yung unang, unang UP opened in Manila in 1909, and then Union College of Medicine. So the Philippine Medical School was established in 1905, and then it, it predated UP. And then Fine Arts in 1909, um, College of Liberal Arts in 1909, and the College of Vet Medicine in 1910, followed by College of Engineering and then College of Law and then the College of Agriculture in Los Baños, Laguna. And then in 1915, Ignacio Villamor became the first UP president. So he was the first Filipino to lead by what had by that time became the Philippines' premier higher educational institution. And then in 1935, Yung famous oblation or oblet 
was installed at the campus in Manila. So this is the creation of the national artist Guillermo Tolentino and inspired by his interpretation of Jose Rizal's Mi Ultimo Adios. Um, first up on our speakers, I would like to welcome um, Deputy Consul General Anthony Manda. Hi, good afternoon everyone. Mga kapwa uh, isko at iska from UP at uh, fellow alumni who are based here in uh, Victoria and elsewhere. Magandang hapon po sa inyong lahat. First of all, I would like to thank uh, Janica and the uh, officers of uh, UPAV for hosting yet another important event. Um, I had to ask for the uh, program for today because I was already getting confused of the uh, flurry of activities happening. And it, it seems... Uh, UPAV has been very busy lately, which is good, and a lot of our alumni are getting more involved in its activ in its activities. Now, I asked, uh, I have only five minutes, uh, might as well make the most of it. I asked Janica what my role should be for today, and sabi niya a little bit of history, but Janica already gave a lot of um, historical tidbits for you, so I guess what's left for me to do is to, again, thank all of you and... Uh, and listen in to what uh, each one has to say for this program. Uh, maybe I should just mention, uh, mention some um, trivia about uh, what I just learned. No, I was probably reading the same material that Janica uh, read, but I, I got curious with the fact that uh, yung UP Maroons pala, our beloved UP Maroons, uh, used to be called the... Uh, UP parrots sometime in the 1960s. So from maroons to parrots and then back to maroons. Um, siguro hindi maganda connotation ng parrots. So we went back to maroons and, and I read this in the column of uh, former UP VP for uh, Student Affairs, uh, Butch Dalisay, a very prolific writer. And he was, uh, he was uh, relating the story in the context of our uh, entering the uh, UAAP men's basketball finals in 2018. But now, of course, that, that's behind us. We have um, been crowned champions again of the UAAP men's basketball tournament. But uh, other than being champions in, in sports and in basketball, we always fall, fall back to the fact that we are the brightest and the smartest students the Philippines routinely produces. So <laughs> we always fall back on that. Sabi ni Butch, uh, it's our lame excuse whenever we lose, but who can argue against it? That's a fact. So again, um, thank you very much. I, I cannot uh, say much uh, much else in terms of history. I'm, I'm nowhere near the batch of one point seven, really, as you probably know. But uh, I'm just so happy to be with you today and uh, be part of this program. And uh, listen in to all the uh, uh, interesting stories that are going to be shared. Marami salamat po. Magandang hapon. Thank you, Anton. I hope you can um, stay for a bit and yeah, listen to some of the stories that we'll um, show today. Um, salamat ng marami. See you soon. Thank you. Um, next up, um, I would just like to um, acknowledge the support of yeah, um, many UP alumni who have Put up, put up their hand for this um, afternoon. So, and also yung mga naunang um, um, alumni that I've known in the past two years that I've never um, known before. So um, shout out to you all, yung mga um, executive committee now. Um, um, I'll, mention it, I'll mention your names later. But for now, um, let's move on with the program with um, some of the presentations that we've um, um, pre prepared. So the, the, the next stop is Yung storytelling highlights. So in the last two years, um, we've been lucky enough to have some storytellers within the alumni group who are um, willing to share their stories of migration to Australia and bringing their family here or just on, on how they were able to settle. So. Um, one of the um, good things about storytelling is you actually learn and be able to find out that you're not alone when, when you're a migrant in Victoria. Oops. Sorry about that. Um, so the first one in our lineup of storytellers this afternoon is 
Um, they Billy Nagayo. Um, I'll just share my screen now. Sorry, I, I think I've been uh, told that there is no audio. Um, let me try that again. Please let me know if it's not working on your ear, um, if you can't hear anything. Um, I'll try that again. Hello, 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 hello Iko and Iska. My name is Babylin Nagayo and I feel really grateful to be given this opportunity to share a little about my career journey in technology. But before that, I would like to briefly introduce myself, especially that I haven't met most of you in person yet. I am originally from Pulilan, Bulacan, and I am married to Patrick Nagayo, who used to be my classmate in UP Diliman. We are both CPAs in the Philippines, but decided we don't want to practice general accounting. So now I am in cybersecurity, and Patrick is in mergers and acquisition. We have one daughter, and her name is Liana. She's turning seven next month. I work at EY, and I've been with the firm for almost five years now. EY sponsored my work visa back in 2017, and I took Patrick and Liana with me as my dependents. Just last year, EY also sponsored my family's permanent residency here in Australia. So sobrang daming blessings to be grateful for despite yung mga challenges brought about by the pandemic. I started as an IT auditor sa EY, and I was given an opportunity to work on a cybersecurity project just before COVID hit. I believe that was in late 2019. And, you know, I always feel challenged being in an environment wherein I know so little. So I requested to be formally transferred to the EY cyber team here in Melbourne. And that was in 2020. So as expected, I struggled a lot at the beginning considering that I have a business administration and accounting degree and I don't have the technical IT background. So I even got to a point where in can I question kung sarili ko kung ano ginawa ko sa career ko. But I truly believe that God has a better plan for me and my family. As many of you are aware, uh, nagboom talaga yung cybersecurity industry since the pandemic hit us. And I believe I made my move to cyber at the perfect time. It was very challenging at the beginning, yes, pero it's all worth it. Parang yung lahat ng hirap na pinagdaanan ko nung nasa UP pa ako, all worth it. And, you know, as scholar ng bayan, yung, yung husay at dangal talagang daladala natin kahit saan man tayo magpunta. Almost always, you know, nag -e excel tayo sa mga pinapasok natin. Sa case ko, with the support of the women in tech community within EY and outside EY, I have grown so much in the technology industry, which we know is a male-dominated industry. And with the support of people who believe in me, I was able to overcome yung negative self-talk ko and self-doubts, which opened a lot of doors for me. So currently, I'm an active She Leads Tech Ambassador in Melbourne, wherein I get the chance to work with amazing women in tech to increase yung awareness around the need for inclusive practices and to really encourage women to think differently about their career choices. Yung She Leads Tech subcommittee siya ng ISACA Melbourne that aims to 
increase your representation of women in technology leadership roles and tech workforce in general. Within EY naman, um, I'm part of the Oceania Women Tech Working Group and we collaborate with external organizations sharing the same goal of closing in gender gap within the technology industry. So just last month, I did a small project with Code Like a Girl We're In. I took over their Instagram page for a day to share about a day in my life as a cybersecurity consultant at EY. Itong Code Like a Girl, it's a social enterprise that supports girls and women into entering and thriving dun sa world of coding. So I still have so many other things to share with you all about yung journey ko within the technology industry. Pero hanggang dito na lang muna for now. Thank you, Janica, for the opportunity to share today. Please know that I'm really, really appreciative of everything that you do for our UP community here in Melbourne. So stay healthy and well, everyone. Hope to meet you in person soon. Bye. So that's Baby Lead. Um, and yeah, she's been... Um, a member of um, UP alumni in the last, I think, five months or yeah, less. So yeah, welcome, Baby Lean. Next up um, in our storytelling is Mari Dell. Hi, Mari Dell. Maganda hapon. I think you're on mute. Uh, sorry, my connection was no. bad earlier. So I just got back on. Sorry. Anyway, um, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Maridel Martinez Andenar. Um, I've been in Australia for 23 years. I moved here in 99. Under, um, so my hus husband moved here in 97. And then I followed in 99. Prior to that, I was working in the media industry in the Philippines for maybe six years. So I started working for um, ABS-CBN, eventually did freelance jobs um, for several stations and um, Silver Star Communication, who was doing um, UAAP back then. And when I moved here, it wasn't an easy start. So it was a bit difficult trying to find a job because um, they wanted local experience. Um, I did odd jobs. I worked for a butcher shop. I worked for a factory. I did volunteering until I found the opportunity to work for SBS Radio in 2001. So ever since I, uh, 2001, I've been working with SBS Radio. So SBS Radio is Australia's multicultural broadcaster. So we broadcast in around 70 languages. One of them is Filipino. We broadcast from Monday to Sunday at 10 a.m., delivering stories about communities, Philippine, the Filipino community and their life here in Australia. And of course, news uh, updates about what's happening in the Philippines. So we have, for a few years now, we've been on a multi platform so we are on digital we are on radio and we are also on podcasting so the sbs.com.au slash filipino so um all throughout my life here in australia the only thing that um kept me was because you know in up we don't have all the we don't have a lot of resources, so we know how to make do with the things we have. So that was one of the things that helped me a lot. And the support of the people around me and the people who... There is also a fellow UP alumni, Malu Logan, who gave me the opportunity to work for SBS Radio, gave me the support, taught me how to transition from TV to radio. So... To her, I always say I owe a lot because she gave me the break and she gave me the right support to be able to um, work through my to be able to work my way through radio. So I've been there for today's my this year is my twenty first year, and um, as a employee of SBS Radio, I'm also a public servant because we are federally funded. So we are also 
fed um, government employees. So through that, um, I try and serve my fellow Filipinos around Australia by sharing their stories and, you know, linking them up when I have the opportunity to other opportunities as well. Oh, thank you, Marinelle. It's great to know that you work at SBS. I subscribe to SBS. I think a thank lot you. of us will do that. <laughs> so, yeah, follow Marinelle at SBS Filipino. Mabuhay! You had more power. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Um, next up in our list of storytellers is Gary Girao. Hi, Gary. Hello. Good afternoon. Can you hear me? Yes, yes, we can. All right, so um, I guess I'm, I've been in Australia now for 15 years. Um, I started in, in UP Diliman in 86 during the EDSA revolution, during the time when um, you know we won the basketball championship with Benji Paras. Um, and during that time, we were the last batch who did um, the mandatory Spanish. Um, 12 units at uh, UP Diliman. And during that time, there was already some new grumblings of what to do with the car park in, in the lap, yung kulang daw yung car park across the faculty center and the lagoon. Uh, that's, that's my time in UP in 86. Um, got over to um, New York for about 12 years or so. Again, helped by the UP uh, contingent who were ahead of us back in New York. So ginagawa nila noon is that we were going to be uh, interviewed um, in the Philippines and then we were matched uh, before um, everyone else. So um, and then some colleagues of mine sa UP, the upper batches were able to get us to stay in their houses and apartments before we got ours. So really, really been helped by UP. My experience in getting to Australia eventually um, is that the reason why I went to Australia is because of uh, my um, my desire to do tropical medicine. My field had been infectious diseases and internal medicine. And so I went to Darwin for about three years or so. Um, my um, my um, My journey to Darwin was relatively... Um, straightforward. Um, so they didn't actually give me a hard time. They just got to hire me. Um, I get to see a lot of Filipinos in Darwin. Um, you know, to Darwin, I think Filipinos are the second largest minority group. So we really were taken care of. And then eventually I got myself to, to Hobart um, to work um, in the hospital there. Um, I became the head of department there, and now I'm at Melbourne in Alfred Hospital um, doing um, COVID work, infectious diseases, and internal medicine. Um, what, um, what I really learned from all of this thing is that um, it's like um, we, we've been told that UP stands for University of Pila. Uh, because of all the PILA that we had to do, pay, PILA for paying, PILA for lining up for classes, for everything. And that, I think, helped us to be, become persistent in this world. Um, so we were not given any, um, you know, golden spoon. But we really had to work hard and find our niche in this world. So that, for me, had been a valuable lesson all through this last two decades or so working in America and working in Australia. And I must say that working in Australia, I haven't had the chance really to bump into a lot of my UP colleagues. And so I'm really happy with Janeka and being able to touch base with her um, through uh, a basketball celebration a few weeks ago. Uh, and then so, I'm, you know, I'm really, really refreshed and, and happy that I'm meeting my fellow Isco and Iska. So thank you very much for inviting me to this forum. Sorry. Janeka, I think you're on mute. Oh, 
sorry about that. I kept talking. <laughs> this is um, a multitasking today. I've got a special guest here. <laughs> um, yeah, this is my one and a half year old. Um, but yes, thank you, Gary, for sharing your story and welcome to Melbourne. It's been um, good to oh. know you and yeah, meet you at the first um, time, the first time that we had uh, the the victory party um, last month. Yes, really, really happy to meet all of you. Thank you. Um, next up on our list is Katrina Gonzalez. So Katrina also is going to present, or uh, I'll share my screen for her presentation. So welcome, Katrina. Hello, Janika. Hello, every. Oh, sorry about that. Had to stream. <laughs> um, here we go. I'm just going to share your um, presentation as well. All right. Just full screen. Yes. Great. This slide three. Uh, slide three, please. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. I am Katrina and I am a PhD candidate at Swinburne University. I am here today to present the results of my study entitled Labor Market Participation and Integration Outcomes of Skilled Filipino Migrants in Melbourne, Australia. Next slide, please. My motivation for conducting this study is that skilled Filipino migrants are understudied, but one of the most important and rapidly growing migrant groups in Victoria. They are part of Victoria's top five skilled migrants in 2016, together with the Indians, Chinese, British, and Sri Lankans. And why skilled Filipinos in Melbourne? Because Melbourne is on the lookout for talented international migrants and a significant receiver of migrants. Melbourne also has a thriving Filipino community. Next slide, please. My study's main objective is to examine the employment experiences of skilled Filipino migrant workers and how they translate to the desired and actual labor market integration outcomes. I have two research questions, namely, what are the barriers and facilitators that affect the labor market participation of skilled Filipino migrants? And how do the experiences of skilled Filipino migrants influence their labor market integration outcomes? Next slide. For my research methodology, mixed method approach was utilized. How did I select my respondents? They should be permanent residents who entered Australia under the skilled migrant stream or in any stream before eventually becoming a PR who are working in local government areas of Melbourne. Initial contact with the participants was made through email and advertisement. Next slide, please. For my primary data, I was able to have a total of 146 online survey respondents. The survey questionnaire is divided into three sections, demographic, pre-arrival, and arrival experiences. Next slide. I had the opportunity also to interview 10 participants to learn the detail about their employment experiences. The interview was consisted of questions about their motivation for migration and the facilitators and obstacles to their successful labor market integration. Next slide, please. I will 
Now be presenting my findings. They are all in percentages and analyzed per gender. Who are my respondents? They are obtained from a survey of 146 skilled Filipino migrants living in local government areas of Melbourne. Of this population, 51% are female and 49% are male, and majority of them are married. Next slide. This slide shows the summary or the list of the pre-arrival characteristics and employment experiences of skilled Filipino migrants. Skilled Filipino migrants living and working in Melbourne are young, highly educated, and generally skilled. Before migrating to Melbourne, 88% of the respondents were already working either full-time, part-time, and self-employed. Most male respondents, 95%, were employed, while 82% of female respondents were employed in the workforce. Male also have higher job satisfaction than females. My respondents are newly arrived cohorts, wherein 45% of them arrived between 2016 to 2020. The pre-migration English language skills of female respondents were somewhat higher than male respondents. I also asked the respondents about their financial literacy because financial literacy is part of human capital which is associated with better labor market integration and found out that over 75% of my respondents are financial literate. Next slide, please. This slide shows the summary or the list of the arrival and post-arrival experiences of the skilled Filipino migrants. The respondents' largest occupation here are the information, media, and telecommunications, professionals, and the healthcare and social assistants who make up 41% of the total respondents. The present occupational status of the respondents, including those employed as full-time and part-time, is about 91%. This is higher than the workforce participation rate of Victoria's national figure of 60%. The attitude of host country people towards migrants play a significant role on how well the migrants settle in their current job. 20% of the respondents reveal that they have faced discrimination in their daily lives. When asked to, to specify, the discrimination they received is mainly work-related, such as salary, salary offered was lower than the average, and given unfair treatment like being pushed around and micromanaged. Next slide, please. Based on the above findings, the following practical implications are offered in the belief that their adoption would significantly encourage better integration of skilled Filipino migrants into the labor market in Australia, not just in Melbourne. First, preparation before migration. Migrants' preparation should involve the collection of the necessary information about the work requirements. Financial skill and capital are also a significant component of the migration planning. More Filipino community support. As the initial settlement period is crucial, additional support should be given to the newly arrived to help accelerate the process of employment, integration, and minimize unnecessary dislocation. Improve relationships with the host community. One of my key findings indicate that skilled Filipino migrants maintain relatively low levels of relationship with the Australian community. It is recommended that skilled Filipino migrants should be more proactive in forging strong ties with the Australians who can help them in their employment search. The government help in labor market integration and policy changes. Proper and effective government support is required for skilled migrants. Um, skilled mi migration policy changes a lot, so it also affects the skilled Filipino migrants' labor integration. Um, thank you, and that completes my presentation. I'm muted again. <laughs> Thank you so much for sharing that, Katrina. That's Thank wonderful you, to hear about the results. Um, Katrina is a PhD candidate at Swinburne University, as, as she mentioned, and she's doing this research, and I think it's about to be published this year, isn't it, Katrina? So good luck with that. Yes. Thank you for sharing your um, presentation today. Thank you, Janika. Um, next. Thank you. I'll see you soon. Next up in our storytelling session is Mark Vergara. Hi, Mark. Hi, good afternoon. Hi, everyone.
right. Um, so do I just? You can go for it. Yes, go for it. All right. You're yeah. or you're 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 on now. All right. Yeah. So I'm supposed to share. Uh, so I'm part of the storytelling. All right. Hi, I'm Mark Vergara, uh, UP Manila Batch 94. I think uh, you are on mute. I'm going to interrupt you there. I think I can't hear you. I think you might be on mute. Oh, hold on. Uh, it says I'm not. Hold on. Oh, maybe it's just me. <laughs> All right, go for it. Okay, hold on, I can't see. All right, is that good? Okay, he's audible. Okay, cool. All right, again, <laughs> take two. Hi, I'm Mark Vergara, uh, UP Manila Batch 94, uh, UP Los Banos 97, and UP Diliman 2001. So, I work for an international design firm, design and consulting firm where I lead a team of 30 ecologists, environmental scientists, and marine biologists across Australia. Our main office is in Victoria. In, Mel in Victoria is in Melbourne, but it, I mostly work from home where I share our humble abode with my wife, who's also full-time work, work from home, and UP Las Bagnes Batch 96, our two adult daughters and our baby French bulldog. That may sound like a good life right now, but that wasn't always the case. It was December 2014 when I first brought my family to Adelaide as a skilled migrant. I had high hopes of an even better life in South Australia after relocating from Singapore where I was country director and a technical director at the world's largest engineering and design firm. Surely someone would want me here either my current employer or competitors, surely not. To cut the story, the story short, uh, after working as a farmhand, medical center cleaner, pickpacker, and forklift driver, I decided to work as a laborer for a land management company here in Melbourne's southeast. It was literally backbreaking, putting plants in the ground or killing weeds all day. Sipag at Chaga was definitely in action for me there. I was grateful for the opportunity just to work in the environmental industry, even though I couldn't uh, feel my body after I got home from work. I learned the ecology of Victoria as quick, as quick as I could, took photos of every plant or animal I couldn't identify at the time, and came up with a photo library of plant ID and their location such that I don't only remember the scientific name by heart, but can also pinpoint the location of where I saw them in Victoria. So my peers noticed my diligence, passion, and always ready to lend a helping hand. That, that reached the management uh, that I was asked to join the environmental consulting division within three months of casual work and promoted to environmental coordinator in the following two months before I even completed my six month prob probation period. Um, I was the only Asian then in a group of 70 staff. At the time I left the company, I was leading the environmental consultancy division with somewhat a wake up call from my CEO when I talked about how to grow the team and the business saying, you're too big for us, Mark. So there were no hard feelings when I left the company to join my current employer. I am still friends with my former CEO and have since brought large contracts to her through my current employer. Well, you know, as Filipinos, particularly those of us who grew, back, who grew up back home, we are very uncomfortable talking about salaries and promotions. Throughout that roller coaster ride, uh, I never asked for a promotion or a raise. And I left it all to working with excellence and hope that my bosses notice and give me the promotion and salary I deserve based on my value to the company. 
now that I think about it and seeing how things work in Australia, I should have. So for a long time, I was in a way embarrassed or ashamed for leaving the country to look for greener pastures in Singapore and then in Australia. There was guilt in leaving the country at that time because the words I had written for a 2004 article in the Philippine Star and eventually ending up in DOSD's compilation book, Science and Technology for Securing a, Be for Securing a Better Philippines, were haunting me where I said, three years after that experience, I'm still with the UP Marine Science Institute as a graduate student and part-time research associate. I kept telling my, I keep telling my friends that there is hope in what I do, that I will not become part of the statistics of Filipinos who have chosen to forego their dreams and passion in exchange for more comfortable lives by migrating to Australia or Canada or by joining well-paying call centers. But then here I am in Australia a few years later. So my guilt was actually driven by the lyrics of UP Naming Mahal where it says, Malayong lupain, di kailangang marating, dito maglilingkod sa bayan natin. For quite a while, I felt guilty when working on projects in the Philippines as I was supposed to be a scholar ng bayan and even got my first employer in Singapore to donate a 300,000 peso modeling software to UP Diliman and ask my former professor, Bayad na ba yung utang ko sayo sa UP boss? To which he replied, Bayad na, may sukli pa. It's really funny and kind of embarrassing because it was only lately that I realized that the UP naming mahal version stuck in my mind was from Gary Granada's libretta of Leanne, the musical. The correct lyrics of UP naming mahal was actually Malayong lupain, amin mang marating, di rin magbabago ang damdami. Well, silly me for carrying that baggage for a long time, but it did help me uphold my UP core values of honor and excellence. My UP training helped me become an excellent farmhand, cleaner, big packer, forklift driver, and now environmental consultant. Despite that very rough ride when I moved to Australia, I always felt proud and honored for those opportunities, saying to myself, Sipag at Chaga and God's grace will take me there. Kaya mo yan, UP ka eh. Dati nga natatulog ka pa ng nakasabit sa jeep pa uwi galing Padre Fara. Dati date nyo ni Christine sa fishbowlan lang sa Diliman. Ano naman ang ire-reklamo mo ngayon? I'd like to close by singing the lines to the alternate UP namin ma. Na, I'm kidding. Just reading. One of my daughters is actually a professional singer, so she might not talk to me after I embarrass myself here. Silangang mapula sa disag magpakailan man ating ipaglaban, laya ng diwat kaisipan, humayot itanghal, giting, tapang at dangal, mabuhay ang lingkod ng taong bayan. This is Mark Vergara, student number 9424131, signing off with pride and respect to everyone who made it here. Thank you. Well done, Mark. Thank you for sharing your story in, in um, this um today and also during in this medium in facebook um thank you so much and yeah we'd love to um continue hearing from you um and sharing these stories and reminding us of the lyrics of you pinaming mahal <laughs> that is yeah that, it's good to hear it na with in in tagalog which we don't normally hear a lot so yeah salamat sa pag mention all right cool. um thank next yeah thank you Next in our um, lineup of um, program, um, I, I was going to um, introduce a guest speaker, but she's not here yet. So what I'll do is um, share my screen about some highlights in the last um, year or so about UP campuses. So I did a little research, some presentation. I got in touch with the UP Office of Alumni Relations and they sent me some news about infrastructure 
and systems and recent happenings in UP campuses. So bear with me, I'll share my screen again. I am trying to find it. <laughs> um, hang on. Window, window. I might just do this. Here we go. Hope you can see that. Um, so here we go. Some snapshots of the recent events that we've had in UP campuses. So First up that I could show you is some um, national artists and alumni appointees in their recent um, election in the Philippines and a memorial museum in UP Diliman. So we have um, five new um, national artists that have recently been announced um, in, in order uh, of the photos that you could see from left to right. Chemino Abad, national artist for literature Fides Cuyugan Asensio, National Artist for Music, Agnes Luxin, National Artist for Dance, Tony Mabesa, National Art Artist for Theater, Ricky Lee, National Artist for Film and Broadcast Arts. So you can see this um, uh, photos and some article written. Um, if you log in the up.edu.ph, you'll see um, this new article recently published. And we also have um, recent appointments of the new cabinet of the government and elected officials or from UP Diliman. So they're all, oh, sorry, UP alumni, not necessarily Diliman. So all from campuses of UP. So it's a long list as well. If you check out the um, website of the um, UP, UP um, alumni relations, it's all listed and yeah, it's amazing. Um, if you're from UP Visayas, um, UP Visayas signed a memorandum of understanding to provide a solar grid for UP High School in Iloilo. So that's first as well. And in Davao, um, the UP Alumni Association proposed a Bahay ng Alumni. And in UP Diliman, there is going to be uh, the establishment of the UP Freedom Memorial Museum in September this year. Um, so yeah, that's a lot of things that's happening. Um, what I'll do next is show you some slides from um, some memorable experiences and photos that I've gathered from um, our members. Uh, I won't show them, but I'll show the photos that they've sent me. So this is from Carl and Lani. This is from Jean. Oh, so Carl and Lani, they're a couple based in Melbourne and they have their um, names engraved. I think this is in Diliman, BSIE it says. So they're both from uh, engineering in Diliman. So Carl and Lani, they have that um, in their photo there. Um, Jean Audrey Akinde, she's also sent us her favorite spots um, in, in Diliman. That's Lutong Bahai and that's also the um, that oval track. And I think that's across engineering, if I'm not wrong. This is for me, uh, my beloved um, OBEM. <laughs> it's my one of my organizations that I joined when I was in campus. So Break Even is our newsletter. And these are the people I've, I really miss them. <laughs> I don't know where they are, but somehow I've kept this uh, magazine. And Rochelle, um, he, she sent me a few photos, but I put in here. Um, and that's it. Uh, yeah, I know you, you probably have a few that you would. Oh, you can't see the photos. So oh, my. Um, share. I will try to share it again. Let me have a look again. What is going on there? <laughs> um, but I would like to invite. Uh, and mention the executive committee this year who's helped um, support our, our group to be um, incorporated and also accredited. So they, in, um, uh, in the last maybe two years, um, we've been in contact and, you know, communicating in various ways and trying to keep up with the um, activities that we've got planned. 
Um, so Jules Husayan, Rochelle Castro, Jeff Ramos, Manny Estadislao, um, and then our advisory committee. Um, we have Mike Venezuela, Melba Marginson. Um, we've also got um, Marian Sison, uh, L. Evelyn Fuentes, and Roberto Evangelio. So that's the um, advisory group. Um, for now, I'm going to pass to Mike, who's going to share a bit about his um, message for the members. Hi. Hi, Mike. Hi, everyone. Uh, yeah. So, hi, everyone. Uh, yeah, this is uh, Mike. Um, so I'm I'm happy to be with you uh, once again. I know that uh, we've been together like a couple of weeks ago when we celebrated in Tambayan the, 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 the championship of the UP Maroons. And uh, I'm actually here again in Tambayan today. And uh, we have some events uh, later on. So uh, anyway, um, yeah, so I, I'm, I'm very, very happy that, that we have this uh, alumni of, uh, of our fellow UP here in, in Melbourne. So that we can have, uh, we can expand our network, and uh, we can have a uh, collaborate with each other. How we can really help each other, because it's really, uh, it's all about uh, cooperation and helping. No? So maybe I'll to give you an, a a brief uh, background on, on myself. So um, I'm also from uh, UP Giliman. I am um, I graduated from College of Business. We have uh, in. Making it if uh, my my correct number is eighty five to zero three nine to seven, so that gives away my uh, my age at the moment. So uh, I graduated with a double bachelor degree in business administration and accountancy, and then uh, I started my career as an auditor in SG Bank Company, uh, uh, and then um, I, I did some businesses back home in in, in Pangasinan where I came from, and then uh, 20 years ago, I migrated to to uh, Melbourne with my young family as an accountant. Um, of course, I I struggled in the, in the early days that like I was here, that like I came as a migrant, uh, like you all. Um, I started working in a factory also, you know, doing night shift, um, but uh, eventually I was able to to get a get a, a job as an, as an accountant when I finish my CPA here. So eventually I, I work in different uh, suburban practices, uh, accounting firms and auditing firms. And, and now I have my uh, MLV accounting that I have started 10 years ago. And we're just trying to, to maximize what we have here. And we also uh, expanded our our businesses to restaurant like like here in Tambayan in Kearney Town Center and we also have our restaurant in in Officer. Uh, it's called uh, Carvery and More. And we're also part owner of Talier Auto Group. So the one in Gangingong uh, I'm part of that. Uh, and we have our offices, our accounting firm offices here in Tambayan in Kearney and also in Gangingong the one in Talier. So uh, we try to we try to help uh, how we can help uh, our fellow uh, migrants. We're also active actually in in sports. That's why uh, when uh, UP Maroon won the title, I'm very excited and and I uh, in, and I uh, uh, offered offered Tambayan to be the venue for our celebration and uh, and then eventually um, we also have our basketball team. Here in in uh, in Australia, um, and we also have our basketball league. We call it uh, League Australia. So we really try to to uh, to help our fellow community here by way of uh, being active in 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 activities that that matters to our migrant community. Uh, some some time before we are also active with uh, with bringing. Uh, Filipino uh, artists to Melbourne, and uh, because of pandemic, we, we stopped uh, bringing them. But but uh, previously, two years ago, we brought we brought our uh, some uh, uh, popular artists 
here to Melbourne just to to remove our homesickness here. So that is my humble uh, contribution to to our co community here in Melbourne. I always believe that uh, by helping our fellow kababayan here uh, to remove their their homesickness and to be able to to start uh, something uh, like uh, being a uh, you know an accounting firm for the Filipinos to go to so that I'll be able to inspire or uh, advise them on how to become financially stable here so that uh, our success will have a ripple effect to our families back home. So uh, I guess that's my uh, short story and that's why MLB Group and MLB Counting continuously support uh, activities of our um, of our uh, alumni here in UP, uh, here in uh, Melbourne. Uh, thank you very much, Janeka. Thanks, Mike. You're always uh, very supportive of UPAV and the yeah, from the beginning. So well done. Um, a, a few people have uh, realized that the slides that I showed earlier didn't work. I think because when I shared my screen, I shared it in full mode and then it went to the other screen. So let me try that again because I really did some research on this. <laughs> <laughs> Um, can you guys see it now? <laughs> if not, let me know again in your comments. Um, all right. So in the last, um, I think that recently, so this is the list of the current um, or the new five na new national artists who are from UP alumni. Yeah, it's working. Thank you. Oh, yeah, I just had to enlarge it in one one side. So from in order of, yeah, from left to right, it's Jamino Abad, National Artist for Literature, Fides Kuyugan Asensio, National Artist for Music, Agnes Luxin, National Artist for Dance, Tony Mabessa, National Artist for Theater, Ricky Lee, National Artist for Film and Broadcast Arts. So I think a lot of a lot of you might know them. <laughs> I'll have to do some more research about who they are. I'll. It's all listed in the up.edu.ph. So yes, yeah, I've mentioned earlier, if you didn't hear it. Um, and then the new cabinet and elected officials from the May 22 elections are here. So it's a long list. You'll have to see. Check out the website as well. Alum.up.edu.ph. Is it's all listed there. Um, UP Visayas, if you're from uh, Visayas region, and uh, you will probably know this. So the, the alumni there signed a memorandum of understanding for um, the establishment of a solar grid for uh, UP High School in Iloilo. So that would save a lot of money and energy. Um, and in Davao, the UP Alumni Association, they proposed a Bahaidam alumni in the UP Mindanao. I hope we could get a Bahaidam alumni in Melbourne. Oh. Anyone who, who might have some ideas where we could put our Baha'i alumni um, in Melbourne. <laughs> so, yeah, that's good. Um, and we also had um, some news about the establishment or launch of the Freedom Memorial Museum in UP Diliman. So this is how it would look like. I think this is just behind or beside fine arts um, building. So this would be uh, in honor of those who fought for uh, democracy and human rights during the martial law years. And also, um, uh, it's it's part of the um, flagship project of the Human Rights uh, Memorial Commission. And then um, I also added this, which are the uh, submissions that I received from members of our group. Um, Carl Santos and Lani Buan, they're alumni from Melbourne. They're a couple who have migrated here with kids now, and they had their names engraved, and it says they're BSIE. They're from Engineering Campus. So yeah, thanks, Carl and Lani. And this is the photo of Jean that she uh, sent me, Lutong Bahai and the Akan Oval, which a lot of you will be familiar with, and Dilaman. And this is for me. This is my beloved OBEM uh, break-even newsletter. So I kept this all these years. This is from 2003. And uh, Rochelle also sent me the photos of uh, Palma Hall and the yeah, campuses in Dilema, uh, the, in Dilema, and photos of UP Dilema. So she kind of like misses the, the uh, campus as well. Um, 
I would like to then call on, so I'll stop sharing my screen. I hope you got it all. <laughs> Thank you for bearing with me. Um, I'm I'm single-handedly doing all the sharing and all. So um, I'll, I'll, I'll have to call in Jeff. Uh, Jeff, can you come in and um, tell about your um, uh, message? Sorry, not Jeff. Where's Jeff? <laughs> I lost Jeff. Please come back in. Um, so I think a lot of us uh, have... Um, Oh yeah, great. Yeah, a lot of us um, who have recently migrated, mga maybe ten years ago, didn't realize that you know we 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 actually have a alumni group, and I hope we can encourage more alumni to join us, and I guess you know continue um, participating in activities that will keep us united and be together. Um, uh, the final thing that I would like to uh, invite on is Emmy, but I think she's also having a hard time of logging in. So yeah, there's, there you go. I'll add Jeff now. Um, Hi guys. Hello. Hi everyone. Sorry, Jenica, I didn't hear you earlier. <laughs> yeah, no, I lost you there, but yeah, you popped back in. So thank you for that. Okay, can you hear me? So yeah, um, just a bit about uh, my experience here. I, is that what we're going to be talking about? Sorry, I, I lost my uh, my phone earlier. Um, but yeah, I've been here in Mel in Melbourne about three years now. Um, in in Australia since um, twenty ten, and um, it's it's been challenging. Um, I didn't come from the Philippines. I came from from Europe. So um, I was lucky enough that. Uh, I had experience with uh, um, um, the experience with most people from who are migrants from uh, Europe. Uh, that when they came here, they already had um, jobs. So um, I came through um, when there was a um, 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 an issue with, with the economy, uh, with the financial economy uh, around the world, and um, Australia was doing um, was doing the, by far by the best. So I decided to migrate here, and um, I've been in the construction industry. It's a there's not a lot of Filipinos in the construction industry, so uh, being of engineering background, but but it's uh, I've been lucky enough, and especially when moving here to Melbourne, uh, being exposed to the UP alumni, it's um, it's definitely allowed allowed me to net, network more and uh, getting more friends, you know, in in the same area, and um, the community is uh, definitely flourishing here uh, here in Victoria. So um, Ron. I think um, I, I wish that uh, we could all more see, see each other more. And um, I'd like to plug in um, the networking event that we're going to have um, next week as well. Next week on the 24th, Friday at Lorimer Street. So for those who can come, um, please do come. Uh, the details are um, on the Isco Isca, um, uh, LinkedIn page and uh, also on the Facebook page. So please. Uh, do come and um, and and come with us on this yeah. uh, special. I do time. have I do have a poster that I'd like to share. Um, yeah, before we end up the session, thank you, Jeff, for that message. And yes, yeah, some a bit about you. I um, also yeah, I was also going to do that. <laughs> I was just waiting for if anyone else wants to join us, and I've sent the link. But I think they're okay. Um, sorry, Jenica. <laughs> exactly. So excited. But no, that's cool. yeah, no, all good. Um, so let me just share my screen again because I'd like to show this um, part. So here we go. Um, Jeff and I have been um, organizing this Pinoy Power event. I'm sure you, some of you might have seen it. It's a networking event for professional migrants in Victoria. The first theme was cultural adaptation, which we held last year during um, uh, like no in November. And that was when we were able to get together in person again after all these lockdowns in Victoria. Uh, and then the event, second event, which we're doing next week on the 24th of June is about career growth and aspiration. So um, have a look on um, our, our, web, our, like, sorry, our website, our social media and LinkedIn, it's all posted there. And entrepreneurship, which it's TBC, but yes, we will do it sometime at the end of the year. Um, in, in line with that, I just want to thank everyone who's able to join today. And I just want to show you some timelines of what we've done in the last year. Um, this is some um, um, if, uh, main, main um, highlights of our um, 
I guess establishment in um, in in Melbourne. Oop, it became yeah. So so our first meetup happened in uh, 2020, just before uh, the pandemic um, happened, and then we had lots of virtual meets via storytelling sessions. We did about six during 2020-21. Um, we also had some. Um, in-person meet. So that's when we had our first Kamayan at Mike's Place uh, in Tambayan in Cairnley. We had our first picnic at the park in, in that year as well after lockdowns. And then for the first general meeting it was held last year in February, um, in, in November 2021. And then we held our first networking event. So this year we were able to get accredited and incorporated in Victoria as an incorporated association. And we were able to finally resume in-person events so uh, we were able to do some catch-ups at melbourne cbd and at werribee park and also we launched the mentoring program which i'm quite proud of for a lot of the mentoring participants who participated so that's a great great outcome even though we were only like seven pairs that was a great um submission of people who are willing to um lend their time and, and talent so, and then, yeah, well, for the first time in 36 years, we were crowned the UP Men's Basketball Championship. So I saw a lot of team spirit and UP spirit in that event. A lot of us were able to sing and get together as well. Um, and yeah, next week we will hold our first, uh, second um, Pinoy Power Series. So hope to see you there. If not, we will see you in the next one. But thank you for joining us this afternoon. Um, I just like pull pull up everyone who are able to um I'll stop my sharing my screen. Anton, Jeff, uh, Mike, Katrina, if you're still there, come and join Gary. <laughs> um like put on your um your um video. Thank you. So yeah, well uh thank you, Maridel, for joining. Yeah, Emmy, finally. <laughs> Hi Emmy. <laughs> Hi. Well done. Um um, yeah, Emmy is going to close the this afternoon's um, event. So if you want to start chatting, uh, talking on the screen, Emmy. We can see you now. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Sorry, it took me a while. Um, am I okay? Yes. Okay. So... Um, just to finish up, um, storytelling is that uh, from, from what I have heard, we can actually get a glimpse of the um, people's values and traits that, um, that have made them successful in Australia and also the differences in our approaches and the way we have settled here. But there were also very common themes and... Um, one of the themes was that we don't necessarily land the jobs or the careers that uh, we have been trained for or we studied for. So um, some by choice, some by necessity. And uh, as we have seen from the stories of Baby Lean and Mark and Maridel, there have been... Um, um, that diversions... You know, like um, you don't necessarily, and there's a lot of humility and and acceptance that uh, we are not all entitled. You know that uh, we all grew up in the University of Pila, that we ha we all have to queue up to be successful. So um, yeah, there's uh, all happy ending anyway because of the uh, common characteristics of uh, resilience, obstinacy, doggedness, and resourcefulness. And most of all, humility. And uh, externally, what helped us are the networks that we have established and the support of the people who are directly around us. So uh, thank you again for sharing. Um, and thank you, Janika, for all the hard work that uh, you have done in the last two years. Thank you, Anton, for uh, gracing our... Uh, our uh, event today and thank you again for everyone and all the um, council members and officers who are present today thank you
can I say? It's uh, been an amazing afternoon seeing everyone's faces. So have a good um, UP Foundation Day. And um, mabuhay ang mga taga UP and Filipinos. So um, I was just going to say thank you for everyone who's able to join. And also please keep this year's spirits up and UP spirits up. See you all.